Welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is Precalculus. Uh, we are working through the Demana Waits Foley Kennedy Precalculus book, uh, ver, uh, edition four or five, depending on which book you might have. Uh, we are right now spending some time in section three five. We are working our way through the exponential and logarithmic uh, chapter and wrapping up things kind of this video is really about just solving exponential and log equations and so we're going to do probably four or five examples somewhere in that vicinity and uh, we'll see what we can get done uh, this example is a, a bit of a word problem similar to some of the stuff we saw in section 3.2 and it says the population of Spearsville is decreasing well you can read it uh, the equation follows the same basic format um, as one of these, uh, an exponential growth or decay, uh, you're probably thinking, I'm hoping you're thinking in terms of something like that, or as your book calls it. You now, and these are really all the same thing. Uh, I don't want to spend my life reviewing this, but remember this, this whole thing right here, the one plus R is the B. Uh, those are the same thing. And the idea then is we have an initial value, says 45,000, and it says it's decreasing at a rate of 3% per year. So 1 minus 0 0.03 is 0.97, so that's going to be 0.97, that was a nice 7, uh, to the T or to the X, whichever, it doesn't matter to me. And then the question says, when, sounds like we're looking for T or the number of years or since this was per year, uh, when will it decrease to 40,000? So I'm going to, this 40,000 is not a time, so it is an amount or a population or whatever, in this case population. So 40,000 equals 45,000.97 to the T. All right, and we're going to solve this. Now, we really need to isolate this base exponent thing first, so I'm going to divide by 45,000. Okay, so this is 0.97, parentheses optional, uh, to the T equals, well, in this case, uh, I believe that is point lots of eights. Okay, now when you type this into the calculator, you really don't want to... Uh, uh, do any rounding until the very end. Okay, so let me let me pull up a calculator. Okay, so 40,000 divided by 45,000. Okay, so 40,000 divided by 45,000. And I know you know how to handle this. This is not a big deal. Okay, so there's the 0.88. Okay. Now, what I need to do now is somehow solve this thing and there are really two two different routes to go with this and I, I'm gonna do them both I'm not gonna do them both every single time but I I want you to think about it. what you end up typing into your calculator is gonna be the same but how you think about it is different all right so one way to think about this is rewrite this in log form so log base 0.97 of point lots of eights equals t, and then use the change of base formula. Well, the change of base formula says that you can take the top part, do the log of the point lots of eights over the bottom part. And this is not distributing or anything. This is just the change of base formula. And then type that in. The other school of thought here is I can take the log of both sides. Okay, so I have log of the point eights equals log of 0.97. And what I can do is the, the power property for logs, which says if I have an exponent inside the log, I can pull it out in front. So this is log of the eights, p log of the 0.97. And then I can divide both sides by that log of 
0.97. Now, what I need you to see here is, so far, right now, what, where we're at is the exact same thing on both sides. So it, it's, it really doesn't matter which one of these you do. Now, let's go back to the calculator. So I have log of the 0.8s divided by log of 0.97. Okay, so what I'm going to type is log of my last answer, so that's second and the negative key, divided by log of the 0.97. Okay, and there it is, 3.8669107. Okay, one more time. 3.8669. 3.8. 669 blah 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 so if I want three decimal places which is generally what I want that was interesting I hit that by accident there it is and and we're done okay um, all right so let's do that uh, re rewind pause as you need okay it's all for X this is not pretty this is a logistic function this might have come from a word problem that said something about a carrying capacity of 50 and maybe uh, you had some information like maybe the the uh, y-intercept or the initial value was two and a half 50 divided by 20 and then some other information to solve for the 0.85 and then the question says when is this population going to be equal to 40 something like that okay well this is where we're at I am not a big fan of fractions, as you might have re remembered. So I'm going to eliminate the fraction by multiplying both sides by the denominator. So that goes away. 50 equals 40 times. Now, it is possible to distribute this, the 40. Me personally, I don't want to. I'm going to divide by 40 instead. I mean, I'm, my goal is to peel away the things that are attached to the x. So, 1 plus. And so far at this point, it looks like some algebra. Okay? So, minus 1. Sorry about the thumping. It's just me writing on the smart board. Okay? Um, don't multiply 19 times 0.85. You need to actually divide this out uh, with that exponent of x there. That actually doesn't help you at all. Okay, so on the right side is 0.85 to the x. On the left side is 0.25 divided by 19. So 0.01315. 0 0.01315. Okay, now, again, this is all I'm going to write right here, but honestly, what I want in my is I'm going to keep this number in my calculator. Okay, so just like the last example I had, I can either go to log form and then do a change of base, or I can take the log of both sides. You have to decide which method you like better. It doesn't matter to me. Honestly, they are equivalent. I'm just going to rewrite this log base 85. and then do a change of base. Now again, uh, you can change it to ln instead of log base 10 if you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, so log of the ugly decimal divided by log of 0.85. Okay, so log of my answer divided by log of 0.85. Okay, quick little note to self. Close the parentheses on that first log. If you don't, it's going to mess you up because it'll be doing something else. 26.6475. 26.6475. 26 I think that was. Let me just double check it one more time. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, three decimal places. And since this didn't actually come from a word problem, I don't have... Uh, any uh, units to put on this or anything, but that's that works. Okay, so at this point, all right, let's let's proceed on. 
Okay, this is, instead of an exponential or a logistic equation, this is an actual logarithmic equation. And the basic deal here is I have a single number over here. I need a single log equaling a number. Okay, that is one setup that works. The other one that we'll see in a second is a single log equaling a single log. These are the two, if I have logarithms, these are the two different setups that I need to make happen. Okay, so right now I have addition of two logs. I don't like that. So I need to combine them. And now remember, logs are exponents. And so if you're adding two exponents, you really must be multiplying. So I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, so I rewrote that log is a, a log of a product. And now, since this is just a single number over here, that I have a log equaling a number. This number must be an exponent. Well, I have a base. So I'm going to say the base to that exponent has to be equal to whatever this inside was. And now suddenly this becomes an algebra 1 problem. Okay, so I just foiled that out. I've distributed that out. And if it's a quadratic, which it is, then I need to get everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract 4. And you could either factor or do quadratic formula. I am a fan of factoring when it looks like something I can factor easily. And x plus 3 equals 0, so x equals negative 3. x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. Now, there is a but coming. And I know, you how, I know how you like uh, it when there's an issue. The domain for logs is only positives. In other words, so if I have the log of x, I can only take the log of a positive. Okay, only log of positive. So negative 3 itself is not a problem. But if it makes the inside of a log negative, that's a problem. So, for instance, negative 3 plus 2 is a negative. Negative 3 minus 1, negative 4, is a negative. So negative 3 is extraneous. Okay. So really the only solution is x equals 2. Let's just kind of eyeball that real quick. 2 plus 2 is 4. Yep, that's fine. 2 minus 1 is 1. That's fine. I can take the, net. I can take the log of, of 1. I can take the log of 4. Okay? All right? So that's the situation when you have logs equaling a number. This is logs equaling a log. All right, so what I'm going to do is, again, I have a product going. So I'm going to combine these into multiplication. I need a single log equaling a number or a single log equaling a single log. Those are the two setups I can have. Okay. So I'm going to make this into a single log. Now, what I can actually do now, now technically what I'm about to do is I'm going to raise both sides, or I'm going to use both of these as expo exponents. Uh, they would, you know, this would be referred to as exponentiating both sides. So e to this power, I'm not going to write all that. Because, I mean, where we're at right now is just going to cloud the issue. And ultimately, what ends up happening is I am unlogging both sides. Now, mathematically, you know, if, if I have math people that are watching this, they're all going to cringe. And I'm, I'm really sorry about that. But let's be real about high school students and how much are they going to understand and how much are they going to take away from this. So the, let's just cut to the chase. So I am unlogging both sides. I am exponentiating both sides. Basically, I'm saying the log of this thing equals the log of this thing, natural log. Then the thing inside really has to be the same. So x minus 3, x minus 4 equals 6. Okay, so again, back to an algebra 1 problem. To get this to actually work, I need to distribute out the left side, bring the 6 over. So let's do that. So doing a little factoring again, 
so x x minus 1 minus 6 and so x equals 1 or x equals 6. Okay now again I have to make sure that this all makes sense. So 1 and 6 are both positive numbers but again the issue is not about the 1 and 6, the issue is about what goes into the log. So if I put the, the 1 into 1 minus 3, that doesn't work. That's the natural log of a negative. Remember, you can only take the log of a positive number. That's, the, that's all that's let, allowed. 6 minus 3 is okay. 6 minus 4 is okay. So the 1 is gone. The 6 we can keep. Okay, that one was extraneous. I'm going to do one more example, and then we'll be done uh, with this video. All right, so uh, same idea. I have, remember the possibilities are log equals a log or log equals a number. Single log equals a single log or single log equals a number. Well, I have two logs here. I have subtraction. So subtracting logs, subtracting exponents means division. Be careful. All of this needs to be in a single log, not log of x squared plus 2x minus 10 over log of x. That's the change of base formula, not the quotient rule, not the subtraction rule. Okay. All right, so at this point, I have a single log equaling a number. I'm just going to make this into exponential form. So the base is 5. The exponent is 1. Equals the rest of this stuff. Well, 5 to the 1 is easy peasy. It is 5. Now, I know we're not big fans of fractions, so let's get that out of there by multiplying both sides by the denominator. Bye-bye. So 5x equals, and again, I have a quadratic. It just seems like it's raining quadratics. Hallelujah. Uh, and we're going to subtract 5x from both sides. And hopefully we can do a little factoring. So x is either 5 or negative 2. Now the other catch here again is if it makes any um, logs where we're taking the log of a negative, that's a problem. So 5 or negative 2. Well, negative 2 is already a problem with this one. Log of x, log of negative 2. Negative 2 is out. I don't even have to check the other part. Now, as far as 5 is concerned, 5 is okay here. Log base 5 of 5 is 1. That's not a problem. Um, I also need to check the 5 in here because if this ends up negative, that's a problem. Or, or even 0 is a problem. So 5 squared is 25 plus 2 times 5 is 10 minus 10. That's 20. Okay, so that works. That's, that's 25. All right, so 5 it is. All right, well, that's a little bit of everything. Um, just a lot of uh, quick solve the equation kinds of examples. And this is going to wrap up our chunk uh, for this, this unit. Uh, we will separate 3.6, which is about financial formulas specifically, into a, its own little mini unit and deal with it separately. So thanks for watching. Uh, Sanford Flip Math, we're out of here. Bye.